welcome to another episode of Anchoring Hope. Remember, we're shining the light in these last days that are turning a bit darker. If you guys watch the news, it's not looking good, but there's always hope. And there hasn't been a better time to be alive than right now. So let us rejoice and be glad because today is the day that the Lord has made. Beloved, today we're going to talk about a rule that I just learned this universal law, spiritual law that is deep inside the Bible that I, I just learned yesterday. And, and it's, it's kind of, I feel kind of ashamed because it's almost implied in our, in our nature. The Bible says that the Lord has written the laws in our hearts so nobody has an excuse, even people that never heard about Jesus Christ, to misbehave. But now that we're back and reading our Bible on a daily basis, you know, the Holy Spirit is revealing these beautiful secrets to me. And I want to share this one with you. This one is called the Golden Rule, and it's in the Bible. And, uh, and if you look to other religions, they have something similar, but it's the complete opposite, and we're going to review that. But first, let's go deep. This universal law, this rule, if it was applied by every single human being on Earth, we wouldn't need governments, we wouldn't need jails, we wouldn't need any type of external protection because if we will really do what it says on a daily basis we will virtually live in paradise so we are going to go to the uh, the book of matthew chapter 7 verse 9 to 12. i'm going to read it to you guys i'm reading from the christian standard bible which is very very simple to understand and it says who among you if his son asks ask him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them, for this is the law of the prophets. I'm going to read the last verse because it's so important, beloved. Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them, for this is the law and the prophets. Beloved, this is deep. This comes from Matthew 7, 7, where it says, if you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open to you. If you ask, it will be given to you. But this ends with a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spiritual law. Therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them. For this is the law and the prophets. So what is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord, Almighty God saying here? That the entire Old Testament, including the prophets, all the law, all the Old Testament, can be executed on a daily basis by following these these steps. So what are the steps? What it's saying is that whatever you want other person to do for you, you do it for them. Let me give you an example. You're walking on the street and say there is somebody begging for money and you know you know this person is in need and you have some extra money in your pocket. Now you stop and think. If I was the person in need begging for money, Will I want me to give me money? Of course, because you are in need. So why wouldn't you go and give them money? It's a positive rule, beloved, which means that is the Jesus Christ is telling us to go and do everything for others that they would like us to do to us. For example, if I go and I'm waiting in line and there is an elderly lady that can, cannot barely walk, and she's waiting in line three, four steps down below to you. Wouldn't you want her to take your, your place and you go to her place? If you were her and you were suffering, you would probably want to go faster in that line. So see, those are, these are acts of kindness, right? If you, want, if, if, you, if you want to have a better job and then you are in a position where you are employing people, wouldn't you want to give an opportunity to a person that has a, a, a need for a job that you know that they could do a good job for, for you? 
Now let's talk about people that have committed a lot of mistakes. Let's say that you have somebody that has done mistakes in their life and nobody wants to hire them. If you were that person, wouldn't you want to have an opportunity to get hired again? And I keep telling you more and more examples. Isn't it beautiful? Now, this rule, if everybody follows this rule, there will be no need for the law. If you look at the Ten Commandments, beloved, if you look at the Ten Beloved Commandments that are the ones that are ruling our life, that we try to abide to, everything is to protect yourself and protect your neighbor. Let's, let's, let's give an example. Thou shalt not steal. Well, you wouldn't want anybody to steal from you, wouldn't you? Or you should not commit adultery. You wouldn't want your spouse to cheat on you. So then why would you do it to your spouse? Right? Do not, do not commit for, for me. Do, don't, don't fornicate. What does that mean? Don't, don't, don't sleep around with other people without being married. That is protecting the other person and protecting you. Why? Because when you have a relationship, a relationship with somebody else, number one, you can get all kinds of diseases. And now number two, if you're not committed to life, for life to that person, you're going to leave a horrible wound in their heart. And that will create a lot of struggle for that person for the rest of their life. And I keep, can keep going on the Ten Commandments. For example, it says, love your God with all your might and all your soul and all your will. If you will love God, you will obey all his commandments and then you will have a better life. You shall have no idols, says the Lord. No other idols. Why would you worship a wooden idol? Why would you worship, you know, other, other pseudo gods with small g when you can worship the most high God, when you can worship Yahweh, when you can worship Jesus Christ, which is Yahweh made human, which is your almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of everything that we see. The only reason why you're still breathing and you're alive is because the Lord is giving you life. The spirit that is in you, animating that flesh and bone body, belongs to the Lord. If God didn't want you in this world, in an instant, he will make you disappear. So why would you go and make God mad by worshiping other idols? You see, everything that is in the law can be written and enforced by Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. And I repeat again, therefore, whatever you want others to do for you, do also the same for them, for this is the law and the prophets. Beloved, now let's look at similar similar rule that is in other religions. It's in, it's in Confucianism from China, it's in Hinduism from India, and in Buddhism. But they have it in a negative context. What they say is, do not do to others something that you don't want them to do to you. It's very similar, but it's completely different. Because Jesus puts it on a positive context. Jesus is saying, go and do something good for somebody else. This is the rule. Go, go and do something good for somebody else. Because if you do something bad for somebody else, you wouldn't want that to be done to you. But these other religions, what they're saying is, don't do anything bad to other people because you don't want them to do it to you. But they don't say, don't go and do something good for them because you will want them to do something good for you. You see the difference? One is proactive and positive. The other one is negative and is passive. And you know, I have experienced that all my life, well, living here in Canada. Here, the, the, respect for, the respect for the other person is so great, which is good. But what that created is a society where we don't even see our neighbors. We don't even talk to our neighbors. Because I don't want to bother them, trying to follow the, the rule in the wrong way. I don't get in, I don't, I, I, don't even, I don't even talk to them. It's horrible. Instead, what I should have been doing is, I would love for them to talk to me so I can have friends in my neighborhood. So why, why don't I just go knock on the door, give them, give them maybe, give, buy them a, a cake or something and say, hey, I'm David, I, I just moved to this and start building a beautiful relationship with them. You see the difference? One isolates you and keeps you away. And that gives you, leads you to depression. That's why all these other religions are false. 
and they just change a little bit what the Bible says, and then you're already in the wrong path and the path to destruction. But if I, if you follow the rule the way Jesus Christ describes it, is instead of me not bothering my neighbors, I'm gonna go with love and present myself and give them a gift, so that I can become friends and we can help each other in our neighborhood. You see the big difference, beloved. This message is going to be. I'm going to leave it short like this. I want you to ponder on it. And I want you to practice it. Start today. Because you're going to start to have an immediate better life. If you practice Matthew 7 verse 12. Beloved, remember that we're living in the last days. I'm, I'm switching gears. I don't know if you noticed, but my last videos, I'm going to give you more life lessons on how to build, build a beautiful life. A life worth living under the law of Jesus Christ, under the love of Jesus Christ. So that when Jesus comes and, and picks us up in the rapture, he comes and sees us happy, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody else, in joy, in prosperity, in health, because this is what Jesus intended us for us to have on earth. But because of all our misbehaviors, because we're not reading the Bible, because we don't accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we have a horrible life. And I want, I want Jesus to find me living a beautiful life, a life of surrender, a life that belongs to him, a life that has full trust in what the Lord wants to do in my life. And that's what I want for, for you too. And that's why you're still watching. If you're still watching still right now, please share, like this video, and help me bring it to the world. Did you know that now a lot of people from India are watching us? People from Bangladesh, from, from Pakistan, even people from, from Saudi Arabia are watching us. It's a miracle. It's a miracle, beloved. So let's spread the good news and stay with us because I'm going to keep putting con con content in English and content in Spanish. My promise is one video per week. So until next time, know that the Lord Jesus Christ loves you and I love you too.